So we will start with module 4 part 2 that is fluid flow. So basically what is fluid flow? So in this uh, chapter we consider the flow of fluid through a porous media such as flow of water through an earth and then through pipes or around bodies. For an ideal uh, fluid the fluid particles do not rotate. They only translate and the friction between the fluid and the surface is, is ignored. Also, the fluid does not penetrate into the surrounding body or separate from the surface of the body, which could create voids. The equation for the ideal fluid motion can be expressed in terms of stream function or the velocity potential function. So, in this chapter, we will be learning the finite element applications for fluid flow uh, problems. And uh, we will be seeing how the fluid flow is calculated by taking this finite element method into consideration whenever a fluid flows through a pipe, uh, a uniform cross section pipe, different cross section pipe, and how um, all the things are taken into consideration. We will be seeing it in this particular chapter. So, coming to the first derivation that is derivation of basic uh, differential equations. So in this, the first basic differential equation is the fluid flow through a porous medium. So here we will be deriving the equation for fluid flow through a porous medium. So we consider a one dimensional problem of fluid flow through a porous medium which is as shown in this figure. We can see a one dimensional problem of uh, fluid flow through a porous medium which is actually in the figure. So this is the control volume for 1D fluid flow. So Vx is the, the velocity of the fluid at surface edge x in meter per second. V of x plus dx which is the velocity of fluid leaving the control volume at the surface edge x plus dx. So m in means mass entering the control volume in kg. m generated means mass which is generated within the body. m out means mass leaving the control volume. Mass leaving the control volume. Q means the internal fluid force in terms of cubic meter per second. Rho is the mass density of fluid in terms of kg per cubic meters. A is the cross sectional area which is perpendicular to fluid flowing meter square. T is the time in seconds. So when we look at this figure and see all the notations, we can see all the notations here. Vx, Vx plus Vx, M, M generated, M out, Q, rho, density, rho density, A, 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 and T is the time in terms of seconds. Okay. So, by the conservation of mass, we know that M in it is a mass inside plus mass generated is equal to m out m in plus m generated is equal to m out. So m in is denoted as rho vx a into dt plus m generated is denoted as rho q into dt is equal to m out is rho v of x plus dx into a into dt. This is your equation number 1. So by Darcy's law, we relate the velocity of fluid flow to the 
hydraulic rate this change of fluid head with respect to x as v of x is equal to minus ax into d phi by dx is equal to minus kx into g x number two where this kx is the permeability coefficient of the porous medium in the x direction in terms of meter per second and phi is the fluid head in terms of meters d phi by dx is equal to gx it is the fluid gradient or the hydraulic gradient so the above equation states that the velocity in the x direction is proportional to the gradient of the fluid head in the x direction so from the above equation we can see that so the minus or negative sign implies that the fluid flow is positive in the direction opposite to the direction of fluid head increase or the fluid flow in the direction of lower fluid head okay now similarly the gradient is calculated at x plus dx that is v of x plus dx we substitute uh, by substituting minus of kx into d phi by dx plus d by dx kx into d phi by dx into dx equation number 3 so we substitute equation 2 and 3 in equation number 1 we get as rho of a dt minus k d phi by dx plus rho q into dt is equal to rho into minus kx d phi by dx plus d by dx kx d phi by dx into dx into a into dt for the simplifying it minus rho a dt kx d phi by dx plus rho q dt is equal to minus rho a dt into kx d phi by dx minus rho a dt d by dx kx into d phi by dx now what we do is we divide the entire equation by rho a dx into dt so we are dividing this entire equation by rho a dx dt so we can see here we are dividing this entire equation by rho a dx into dt so after dividing some of the terms gets cancelled and the remaining terms are minus kx dx into d phi by dx plus q by a to dx into dt is equal to minus kx by dx into d phi by dx minus d by dx into kx into d phi by dx so taking all the similar terms in this entire equation we will be substituting it as d by dx Into kx into d phi by dx plus q bar is equal to zero. So what is this q bar here? Q bar is q divided by a into dx. That is the volume flow rate per unit volume. That is the volume flow rate per unit volume. next is differential equation for flow through in pipes and around solid bodies flow through in the pipes and around the solid bodies so consider a steady state a rotational flow of an incompressible and in viscous fluid for an ideal fluid the fluid particles do not rotate they only translate and the friction between the fluid and the surfaces are neglected also the fluid does not penetrate into the surroundings body or separate from the surface of the body 
which could create the voids. The fluid motion equations can be expressed in terms of stream function or the velocity potential function. The velocity of fluid in terms of potential function phi is given by Vx is equal to deva phi by deva x and Vy is equal to deva phi by deva y. Here Vx and Vy are the velocities in x and y directions. So the differential equations for the two dimensional flow is given as what deva by deva x kx into deva phi by deva x plus deva by deva y kx into deva phi by deva y plus 2 bar is equal to 0. So in the absence of the sources of the sinks q and when we set that kx is equal to ky is equal to 1, the two dimensional differential equation becomes as deva square phi by deva x square plus deva square phi by deva y square is equal to 0. So from the figure, the boundary conditions are, the figure is shown here. These are the boundary conditions for the fluid flow. And these are the known velocities at the left and right edges of the pipe. Phi is equal to phi b on S1. So it states that the velocity potential phi b is known on the boundary surface S1. And deva phi by deva x c x plus deva phi by deva y c y is equal to constant which is on S2. So here c x and c y are direction cosines of unit vector n which is normal to surface S2. So this states that the potential gradient or velocity is known normal to surface S2. So we consider the fluid through a pipe in positive x direction as shown in figure B, this one, this one, in a positive direction x, similarly this. So velocity of the fluid in terms of velocity potential, it is given by Vx is equal to minus deba phi by deba x. So at the left edge, let Vx is equal to Vx1 at the left edge as which was shown in the figure. Vx is equal to Vx1. Then we get Vx1 is equal to minus deba phi by deba x. But the normal is always positive away or outward from the surface. Therefore, the positive n1 is directed to the left whereas positive x is towards the right. Therefore, deba phi by deba n1 is equal to minus deba phi by deba x which is equal to v x1 is equal to v n1. So, it was previous let us left edge. Now, we can have right edge. So, at right edge, let v x is equal to v x2. Then, normal n2 is the same direction as x. Therefore, deba phi by deba n2 is equal to deba phi by deba x that is equal to minus v x2 is equal to v n2. At left edge, the flow is directed into a surface and hence the boundary flow velocity is positive. You can see that. And at the right edge, the flow is directed away from the surface and hence the flow velocity is negative. So this completes the derivation of the differential equation of the fluid flow for both the cases which we discussed. So next is the derivation of fluid flow stiffness matrix or finite element formulation for fluid flow. Derivation of fluid flow stiffness matrix or the finite element formulation for fluid flow. So initially we consider one dimensional bar element simple 1D bar element having two nodes, node 1 and 2. 
which is as uh, shown in this figure. So, let P1 and P2 are the nodal potentials at node 1 and 2 respectively and Kf is the fluid flow stiffness matrix. You can see the from this figure, you can see here P1, P2 and uh, the length Le, you can see it from there for the 1D bar uh, element. So, as uh, Kf is the fluid flow stiffness matrix, we know that the stiffness matrix Kf is integral of V P transpose dB into dV. So, this is taken from one of our previous derivations. So, B is the strain displacement matrix that is dN1 by dx into dN2 by dx and D is equal to K, K for one dimensional fluid flow problems. So, here N1 is equal to x2 minus x by Le and N2 is equal to x minus x1 by Le. So, basically this N1 and N2 are the shape functions for this element, 1D bar element. So, therefore, the strain displacement matrix B is given by minus 1 by Le into 1 by Le and the B transpose is given by 1 by Le and 1 by Le should be minus 1 by Le, there is a small uh, mistake here, just make a change note here, it should be minus 1 by Le and 1 by Le. B transpose means those uh, will become, uh, it is written in the vertical form. So, the fluid flow stiffness matrix it is given by Kf is equal to integral of 0 to 1 minus 1 by Le, 1 by Le into k into minus 1 by Le, 1 by Le into a into dx. So, further simplifying, this will give a into k integral of 0 to 1, 1 by Le square minus 1 by Le square minus 1 by Le square and 1 by Le square into dx. First, I write the strain displacement matrix. Then I write this fluid flow matrix by integrating with 0 to 1 and then for the simplification will be giving this equation. Next, further is equal to ak 1 by L square minus 1 by L square minus 1 by L square and 1 by L square integral of 0 to 1 into dx. So, by simplifying this, by taking the integral consideration, a k by L e, 1 by L square minus 1 by L square minus 1 by L square and 1 by L square. This L e, L e gets cancelled, so remaining will be k f is equal to a k by L e, 1 minus 1 minus 1 and 1. So, this is the elemental stiffness matrix equation for a fluid flow problem. Like in our structural problem, it is A e by L, here it is A k by L 1 minus 1 minus 1 and 1. So, what is A? A is the area of the element in terms of meter square. K is the permeability of the porous medium or element in terms of centimeter per second or meter per second. Le is the effective length of the element, overall length of the element. So, by taking this all this into consideration, we can write the equilibrium equation of the fluid flow problem as Kf into P is equal to F. So, this is our elemental stiffness matrix and this is our final equilibrium equation for 
all the fluid flow problems by taking the potential center of consideration we this is the stiffness matrix Thank <laughs> you.